On Sunday, Speaker Nancy Pelosi D. Califf, wrote to congressional colleagues outlining steps that the Democratic majority in the House of Representatives plans this week. She called on Vice President Pence to convene and mobilize the cabinet to activate the 25th Amendment to declare the president incapable of executing the duties of his office. On Monday, the House failed to pass, by unanimous consent, a resolution calling on Pence to activate Section 4 of the 25th Amendment, but plans a floor vote on the measure Tuesday. On a parallel track, House Democrats introduced an article of impeachment, signaling a vote Wednesday if Pence doesn't act in the interim. Certainly, House members have grounds to act, but they're taking a wrong turn, the 25th Amendment isn't impeachment light. To remove President Trump, impeachment is the only correct constitutional mechanism. Democrats have a predicate, in his speech last Wednesday rehashing unfounded claims that November's election was stolen, Trump told supporters, we're going to walk down to the Capitol to cheer on members of Congress trying to procedurally derail the electoral college vote count, adding, you'll never take back our country with weakness. You have to show strength, and you have to be strong. Though Trump didn't expressly call for a physical breach of the Capitol, within hours, a pro-Trump mob did just that in a riot that left five dead, and the impeachment article charges, incitement to insurrection. It's reasonable to debate the political pros and cons of impeaching a president just days before he's scheduled to leave office, and whether or not such a step should be fast-tracked. It's also predictable, if not understandable, that many Republicans in Congress won't go along, and that even if Trump is impeached for a second time by the House, he likely won't be convicted by the Senate. But while Pelosi's ultimatum to impeach if the 25th Amendment isn't invoked might be shrewd politics, allowing Democrats to say hey, we tried everything, it's not the appropriate process. The 25th Amendment was debated, passed and ratified in the years after the assassination of John F. Kennedy and the ascension of Lyndon B. Johnson. It allows presidents to voluntarily pass presidential powers to the vice president for fixed times in cases of temporary incapacity, such as undergoing surgery that involves general anesthesia, something that Ronald Reagan and George W. Bush did during their tenures. The amendments section 4 provides for the vice president, with the support of the majority of the cabinet, to assume powers as acting president, upon written declaration that the president is unable to discharge the powers and duties of his office. Section 4 of the amendment lays out the process by which the president may respond to the written declaration of his incapacity and tell Congress that he's no longer unable and will reassume presidential powers.